Hey guys, my name is Amanda. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel and you like the content you see today, please consider subscribing. If you have already subscribed, you're absolutely amazing and thank you so much for your support. Everyone, please consider giving me a big thumbs up as that really helps me out here on YouTube. Also, before I forget, if you do subscribe, remember to hit that bell button so you're notified every single time that I upload. I am so excited about today's DIYs, so let's jump into it. So this first one is actually more of a hack than a DIY. It's so simple and easy. I found these three animal shapes at Dollar Tree and they were perfect. They already came on the stands and they were only $125. The only thing I may do to them is just remove some of the glue on the stands. They're in the middle there where there's a little crack. Um, there is quite a bit of glue kind of slapped on there, but that can easily be removed by just taking a hot glue gun melting it and wiping it off. So what I decided to do with mine was just to print out some phrases on my Cricut and attach them. However, if you do not have a Cricut, you use a paint pen, rub on transfers, or Dollar Tree even carries some farmhouse stencils that would look really cute on these. So this is what I did with mine and then just added them into my farmhouse decor. So for our next idea, we're going to make this a very large gorgeous sturdy box with Dollar Tree items. I begin with three of these long Dollar Tree signs that come in various colors with various cutouts, two of the dry erase boards with wooden frames, and one of these trays which I broke apart actually two of these trays which I broke apart and I'm going to use the back of. Now I'm going to go back to our wooden frame dry erase boards and I'm going to paint them with Waverly plaster chalk paint. Then I'm going to take the back of our trays that we broke off and I'm going to stain them with Waverly antique wax. Once they are stained I'm going to glue them to one side of our little dry erase board. Of course, I'm going to do that twice. Now I'm coming back to these three large signs and I am just cutting off the cutout parts. They score and then break really easily. So I just use scissors. I want to attach these in a box shape with my Gorilla glue and hot glue alternating. So I lay one flat to be the bottom, stand one up on the side on top of a generous amount of that glue. And I just kind of hold it up while I'm taking some of these little wood blocks and gluing them down along the edge where the two meet for stability. I do that for the left and right side or front and back, however you're looking at it. And then I'm going to use these sides, these little dry erase boards as the sides, and I am going to glue them down again with the same glue concoction. And then I'm going to glue along the inside edges to make sure it's stable. And I'll cover up that gluey mess by taking a piece of Dollar Tree rope and running it up those sides and leaving a loop at the top to be a handle. I'm doing that on both sides and once that is done I decided to go ahead and cover the outside of these dry erase board frames with some Dollar Tree rope as well. I just think that adds a little bit more texture, ties everything together, and also covers up any mess that we may have made with the glue by attaching these. So I just go ahead and do that for some added extra detail. And now I'm going to take a cow from Walmart that cost me almost a dollar and a half around. And I'm going to paint that with Waverly Antique Wax and put that on the front with hot glue. I'm then going to come into these sides. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I decided to just brush on some Waverly Antique Wax and wipe it off. Um, because the insides of these sides have that wooden piece that is stained. So this just ties everything together. So I just showed you that there are some different options for the frame house animals over at Walmart, but I love this little cow. So there he is. So here is the rooster, which you could use. He's just a little bit too tall or a pig. And here's what this looks like. So sturdy, so gorgeous, so large. I actually played a coke 12 pack box inside of here to place my greenery on top of to display it so that is how large it is i really 
Love how it came out. It is very customizable. You could change up the animal and the color as well as painting the whole entire box if you wanted to and also change what you did to these sides. But I hope that you like this idea. Okay, let's talk about my sponsor for today's video and an amazing product that I received from Redmond. So here's what their website looks like. It is very fresh, clean, and easy to navigate. They love to feature beautiful inexpensive kitchen items that are perfect for the busy everyday woman and look gorgeous in any kitchen the website is very easy to navigate and broke down into different sections for you they also suggest bundles that go together and have amazing recipes so i chose a toaster that i wanted to try out from them it came in this sturdy box in a very timely manner and i went ahead and had a couple of my kiddos open the box this is sped up they're not using knives that fast but it came in really nice decorative packaging and I love how the product is clearly featured on the outside. On each side, there's some nice images for you to look at. And when you first open the box, you'll notice how everything is so neatly and nicely packaged. I was really impressed by that. But after we removed the toaster from the box, there was a couple of pamphlets there that I found very useful. There is one that is a manual that you can look through, but there's also another one that clearly shows the different levels of toasting that you can do to your toast all the way from one to six my kids were slightly disgusted with six but let me know what kind of toast do you like on the one to six scale so here's what it looks like it's so beautiful so shiny I am absolutely thrilled with it it'll look amazing in any style of kitchen I have a lot of pioneer women decor in my kitchen and this will look gorgeous the little buttons on the front are clearly a marked and easy to press so you know exactly what you are doing with each button and the dials are clearly marked as well so you can just choose a number that you want your toast to be and turn the dial to the corresponding number it has some little trays that you can remove to clean out any crumbs that may fall while toasting is happening so i grabbed some bagels for my kiddos this is one of their favorite snacks and this toaster does toast bagels so i grabbed some bagels turned it to four my little buttons light up indicating that the toaster is doing what i want it to do and once my bagels were toasted at a four they were not super brown but just the amount of toasting that we wanted and we chose here is my little elliot waiting for his bagels to pop out once they were ready i carefully removed them and added my children's topping of choice so here's what it looks like it was exactly what he wanted and he said it was absolutely delicious so this toaster I highly recommend. Again, it is gorgeous. It is easy to use. Even children can use it carefully and it comes so nicely packaged. Check my description box for a discount code. You won't want to miss out on this amazing product. Okay, let's jump right into our next idea. A quick and easy welcome sign I think it came out so cute so I am going to grab some wall stickers from the Dollar Tree I used two of them and then I'm just going to grab some paint sticks that come three to a pack from any kind of hardware store um, or Walmart and then I'm going to grab two fall signs that I had in my stash and one of them I just broke in half get the correct size that I wanted but if you already had a sign on hand that you could use that would be great I put my two pieces of sign together using some popsicle sticks glued down at the seam and here we go I also used some wood filler to fill in that crack and then I painted the whole thing with Waverly plaster chalk paint use my miter box to cut my paint stir sticks at the angle that I wanted to frame out my sign but if you don't want angled cuts you could totally just cut them to a size I removed the stickers and placed them how I wanted one on the top and one on the bottom the bottom one will be turned around so that the two 
flat sides of the image are facing each other. And what I love about these Dollar Tree wall stickers is that they are easily adjustable. If you place them down and want to move them, you can do that. So once I get my two stickers in place, I am then going to take my frame pieces and I'm going to stain them with Waverly Antique Wax. I was toward the bottom of this little jar so I did add a tiny bit of water. So my wax is a little bit watery. Um, it typically goes on a little bit thicker but this worked as well. I didn't want to waste any of this wax. So I just rubbed it on and typically you rub it on and off. Um, there wasn't as much to rub off as this was a little bit more watery but it worked perfectly fine. I stained all four of my frame pieces. Once they're done and completely dry, I like to lay them out and see exactly how I want them before I began to glue them down. So I just use hot glue to adhere these to my sign, but if you wanted a stronger hold, you could use E6000 or super glue. Hot glue worked just fine for me. So I'm just making sure everything fits nicely and then I'm going to go back and glue down each side with my hot glue here. I had to do a tiny bit of trimming just to make sure everything laid exactly the way that I wanted it to. And I think this comes out so, so cute. I use my Cricut to print out the word welcome, but there's so many different options. You could use stencils, stickers, or a freehand if you do not have a Cricut just to get the word in there. Or Dollar Tree also sells some wall stickers with words on them. I also did not want to waste those couple little images on my sticker sheets of the little florals. So I went ahead and put those here and there so they were not wasted. And they just filled my sign in and looked so nice. Once I get those all in place is when I just applied my welcome word but again the word is totally customizable and I just think that this came out so pretty once you add a little hanger on the back I just use jute twine you are completely done and you have a gorgeous inexpensive I think high-end looking sign so here's our next idea you can make these super cute cutting boards out of cutting boards very easy and inexpensively. I just wanted to elevate these Dollar Tree cutting boards. So I just took two handles of the Paint Stir 6 that we use for crafting that you can find at Walmart or at a hardware store. And I had saved just the handle part of them. And I'm going to attach the handle part to one of the shorter sides of my cutting boards using hot glue. Sorry, my head and nose keeps making an appearance in this DIY um, but anyway once I get both of my cutting boards handles glued on I'm going to paint one of my cutting boards with Waverly plaster chalk paint and I will then paint the other one with Waverly ink chalk paint to the Waverly plaster cutting board I am going to use my vinyl to cut out a stencil I this is not stencil vinyl I just use regular vinyl but it works out fine but you could use a stencil from Dollar Tree or stickers and I just use the ink chalk paint to fill in the stencil and then I just went ahead and removed it this was just an image that I found on the Cricut design space I did dry it about half away with my heat gun before I removed the vinyl and that worked really well for me just don't hold your heat gun quite as close as I did and if you're wondering about the random weird sound that you keep hearing here and there in this video I so much apologize it was time sensitive that I get this voiced over and of course my puppy just had a burst of energy at this particular time and is loudly and slightly obnoxiously chewing on his bone but if he's chewing on his bone that means he is not chewing on my furniture so I am okay with that to the cutting board that is painted with the Waverly ink chalk paint, I added a design with Waverly plaster paint and I did the same method of using vinyl to make a stencil and just painting it in. I then embellished this with some Dollar Tree ribbons and just some lamb's ear that you can find at Walmart. Dollar Tree also has some really gorgeous florals and greeneries as well. I did add add a tiny little bow right underneath that handle. 
And then I grabbed my other cutting board, the Waverly Plaster Colored one, and I was just figuring out different embellishments. The sky is the limit, but I really did like this trim from Dollar Tree, so I placed it along the bottom, and then I placed a little strip around the handle just to cover up any gluey mess that may be there. I also went ahead and took this Dollar Tree polka dotted ribbon and created a little bow by just folding it over and tying it tightly in the middle with a piece of twine for some reason saying that is a real tongue twister for me but i just created this adorable little bow and then i'm just going to attach it where i want it with a little dab of hot glue right there underneath where the handle and the cutting board meet but first i decided to go ahead and tuck my lamb's ear down first and then glue the bow on top of that so here's what that looks like I did create a smaller bow with a Dollar Tree lace and add that right in the middle of my larger bow and I think it came out so cute. Let me know what you think about this one and we are on to a DIY tray idea. I'm going to show you how I made this gorgeous tray with Dollar Tree items. I bought this bright colorful parrot tray at Dollar Tree along with these puffy stickers that look like door hinges. I'm going to place a little hinge on each side of my tray there, each corner that is, and then I'm going to apply three generous coats of my plaster chalk paint right on top of this tray and on top of the stickers allowing each coat to dry before beginning the next coat. I do do a couple more stickers there on the sides as you can see. These stuck very well and did not use hot, I did not use hot glue but you totally could if you wanted to and then just paint right over them as I said and this comes out absolutely gorgeous. This is what it looks like and then I took some Waverly Antique Wax and a Dollar Tree stencil brush and I just lightly brushed over those gorgeous little stickers and the sides of my tray. I also brushed lightly over the middle of my tray to give this an aged and antiqued look. I'm going to take this rub on transfer from Dollar Tree. I had never tried these brown paper stencils before and I was very pleasantly surprised with how they worked. They come on more like a stamp than a bright defined transfer and I absolutely love it for that antique look. So I just took my faux Cricut scraper from Dollar Tree and I just kind of used the edge there to rub over this entire transfer. Once it is done you remove your paper and here is what it looks like. A gorgeous stamped on look. This project was so easy. Very, very simple, but I absolutely love how it looks. I think it's a beautiful decorative piece and quite a large statement piece for a kitchen or a vignette. And Dollar Tree did have several options with these brown paper transfers. So I hope you like this super easy idea that would also look nice in any other size tray what I love about Dollar Tree there are so many different options okay for our next tray idea here is what it looks like outside on my porch here is what it looks like upright there are several different ways to display this but I got this very large oval tray from Dollar Tree it is plastic I also got this wallpaper sticker from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to paint the outer edges of my tray black I didn't have very much so I laid down a base of Waverly plaster first and and then painted it black. I mod podged over that so it wouldn't scrape off and then I took my wallpaper and I laid it upside down and traced around the very inside of my tray. I cut that down and then placed it in the middle just to see where I hadn't gotten a perfect cut and I needed to cut some more. I used my pen to mark that and I trimmed it down. I then removed the backing off of my wallpaper and stuck it right there on the bottom of this tray. I used my hands to smooth it out and I did put a layer of Mod Podge right on top of this wallpaper just for added protection to be able to clean it off. Then I went ahead and took some of these little mini puff puffy or pop-out stickers from Dollar Tree. There's a large and mini. We painted them with our remaining black paint and my son stuck them all around the edge of that wallpaper for me. Then I took some Dollar Tree faux leather and I cut four strips the same size. I glued two of the strips together to form two sets of nice handles. 
So here's what it looks like. I just glue it together and just press it down, allowing the hot glue to dry. You do need to put a little bit of dry on the edges so your handles don't split on the sides there. But then I'm just going to go ahead and glue my handles down with hot glue, one on either side, kind of forming a loop like so. And once that's done, I'm going to take another one of those little stickers that we painted black and put it on either side of the handle to look like it is nailed in there. Once that's done, of course, we'll repeat the process on the other side. The sky is the limit again for how you do this. You could just go around the inside with twine if you don't have those stickers. Um, you could paint the outside any color you like. There were several options of a wallpaper. So there are some ideas for you I hope you like. Here's what it looks like on my porch. Super cute. I'm not quite sure how it's already gotten a little bit of um, spots on it outside, but <laughs> here's what it looks like inside. And again, you could tilt it upright you could use it as a tray you could put feet on it lots of ideas okay let's do some sign ideas so we're actually going to be using a wood plank from Dollar Tree and we're just going to be decorating either side to make two signs here's what it looks like and I have this be happy sticker that is so pretty from Dollar Tree so I'm just going to remove the hanger and I'm going to paint one side of this wood plank with my Waverly plaster chalk paint once that is done I am going to remove the sticker from the backing and place it carefully down on my prepared plank once I am done with that I'm going to go ahead and take some beads that I got from Dollar Tree on a garland and I'm going to take some of this um, beautiful pink colored paint from Waverly and I am going to it actually how I made it <laughs> I almost forgot how I made it was I put some crimson Waverly paint in with some plaster and mixed it to make pink you can use ballet slipper by Waverly too if you would like I brushed it lightly on my beads there that were still on the twine and then I just pulled the twine through the holes at the top of the sign and here is what this side of the sign looks like. When you want to turn your side around you can just remove the beads from the handle and the other side will look awesome. So here's what that looks like. Easy peasy is so cute. Here's the other side. Now I'm going to use a another piece from Dollar Tree of their wallpaper and I'm just going to cut it to size. I'm also going to use some poster board stickers. So I'm cutting down the wallpaper and one strip will almost cover our whole plank but not quite. So I will then take another piece off of the bottom of this extra piece and kind of make it match up so it looks like a continuous piece. Wow, I said piece a lot of times there, guys. Now I'm going to take my Dollar Tree uh, poster board stickers, H M E. I am going to leave a space for the O because I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree little eucalyptus shapes to form my O. And now this transfer usually comes with a circular wreath in the middle. I had already used it. So I'm just going to create my own. By using some of these leaves, I am just going to go around in a circular shape. I do overlap some of them just to get the nice circular shape that I like. And I just rub down these little transfers transfers with my fingernail. Once my O is formed the way that I think it looks nice, I am then going to go ahead and take three more of these little leaf transfers and apply them to the top of the sign so they look like they're hanging down. And I'll also take three more and apply them to the bottom of the sign so they look like they are sprouting up. This was so easy and simple and I absolutely love how it looks. I think it would look really cute just kind of standing as a tall decor piece in any kind of vignette or you can hang it on the wall. I just poked my little poker through those holes at the top so the twine would still go through. And here's what that looks like. Yet another very easy and customizable piece. Okay guys, now we're going to do some wood round ideas. So for this first one, we are going to take a Dollar Tree wood round and some Waverly plaster chalk paint and coat our wood round. 
Then we are going to take these adorable plant wall stickers. <laughs> Sorry if you heard my dog just now. They like to start to wrestle every time I am voicing over. So we're going to take our plant wall stickers and choose one for the middle. And I did a small one on either side, made sure they were pressed down firmly. And then I found some rub-on transfers that I like that I thought matched because I wanted this to have some words on it too. I'm just showing you some options here. So I cut out the word that says family is everything and I applied that right under the middle image. I thought that looked so nice and cohesive. Once that was done, I took my greenery rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree and I just took a few pieces of this greenery and applied some to the top and bottom of the round to add a little bit more decoration on. And then I took this brown faux leather from Dollar Tree and I just cut two strips of equal width, about half an inch or so, and I glued one strip to the bottom there right under our main images and then one to the top so they were kind of framing those images there here is what this looks like i'm going to take a scissor and trim off the excess as close to the wood round as possible this worked really well for me and this craft was just so fun so easy i think it has a really nice look to it but it's very customizable as well um, now I'm just going to make a little hanger by cutting two equal strips. However long you want your hanger, just glue them together so you don't see the back of the leather. And then just glue that on the top there for your little decorative hanger. And here is what it looks like. Let me know what you think about this one, you guys. Some of these crafts today are a little bit different from my normal style, but I love them. So here are some revamp ideas, things that I've made in the past that I'm changing up just a tiny bit. So I originally made this as a mail holder. It is simply a wooden tag with a cork on one side, a Dollar Tree wood plank, and this, I believe it's 18 inch wooden stick from Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to begin by laying them across my tag to measure. Both pieces of wood need to be measured at eight inches to go across the tag. So I'm just laying them down. I have them marked. I'm going to mark all the way across just using my mat and also using that tag as a template. Now I am taking my miter box and saw and just cutting these two pieces down. Now I'm going to take the spare piece of the longer piece of wood and I'm going to cut two more pieces off of it at two inches each. So here I am taking this long eight inch piece of the, of the skinny wood and I'm going to use hot glue to glue it to the bottom of my wooden tag sign. Now I would definitely recommend a stronger adhesive but for video purposes I am just using hot glue and it worked well for me. So again this tag has cork on the other side but I'm using the wood side. Now I'm going to take one of those little wooden two inch pieces and I'm just going to glue it on the side of my tag like so and I'm going to repeat the same process with the other two inch piece. Now I am going to take my eight inch larger wood plank and I'm going to glue it right on top of there forming a little box as this is a mail holder that is the perfect size for our mail. Now I'm taking a large craft stick that you can purchase at Walmart, whole pack for just a couple dollars, and I'm cutting down two two inch pieces to just fit in that little top of the side there and just add a little bit of embellishment. Now I'm painting my whole tag holder with Waverly plaster chalk paint. I had originally dry brushed it so I just stripped it back down. I took off those plant stickers I just showed you that I had originally used and instead I took some of more of this faux leather and I just cut a piece that I thought would fit nicely. I left some space on the top, bottom, and sides, but you could cover the whole front if you wanted to. And I just hot glued around the edges. Then I took some 
some more of these little pop-out stickers from Dollar Tree that I had painted with some black paint and I just placed them down in the quarters. So later on I do change the paint color on them but for now I am just going to give a light coat on the top part of this tag sign so my stencil doesn't bleed and I'm going to use this stencil from Dollar Tree with this beautiful blue color by Waverly and I do end up taking off those tiny little stickers and painting them with this blue color to match. I removed my stencil and then I had formed a tag by just cutting another strip of the faux leather. I pulled it through the hole at the top and when I say tag what I'm trying to say is hanger. Sorry guys you know I get tongue tied sometimes. I just glue the ends of that hanger together and that is what that looks like. Then I'm just going to re-dry brush a little bit of my Waverly Plaster Chuck paint over this and what a super cute and easy redo from those plant stickers. I love to change around my DIYs sometimes when I want a different look but I do not want to spend any more money so please let me know what you think of this revamp and if it is something that you may create yourself. Okay, so our next idea is in keeping with the quick and easy theme of this video, this little box, and I had originally had some ribbon and scrapbook paper on it, but I removed that to try out a different look. So here's how I made the box. I began with these wood planks from Dollar Tree, and they, they come six to a pack. So I'm going to begin by placing one flat on my work surface and then taking another one and gluing it like so upwards so it will form the side of my little crate. I then add some more hot glue on the inside seam and I repeat the process on the other side using some hot glue. Now what I'm going to do with this side is glued slightly on top and one side is glued to the outside of that wood plank if that makes sense so there's just a slight difference and when I place the other wood plank on I'm going to just go in opposite directions and so I'm going to place one slightly kind of on the inside of that plank that's on the side and one slightly on top but I'm going to do it opposite so everything balances out and I just do the hot glue so see I'm kind of tucking that slightly on the inside there um, and then the other side is slightly kind of on the top covering the edge and that works everything out perfectly now I'm just flipping it over adding some hot glue to the inside and then I'm going to flip the whole thing upside down and glue all along the edges so that I can place my bottom on. So here is how I just use five of these wood planks. So for $1.25 it's about a dollar's worth and it's a cute little size for a tear tray, a large tear tray or another space. So here is the side of that tray that I had broken apart and I'm going to take the side and just cover it in this Dollar Tree jute twine. This twine is actually found in the hardware section and so I'm just going to glue it down and start wrapping and wrapping until I have this whole piece wrapped. Once it is completely wrapped, I'm going to use hot glue on either side to place it directly on top of this little, almost like a mini toolbox, and it fits perfectly in there. So you just add a generous amount of hot glue, tuck it right inside, and here is this adorable box. Now I did paint my box with Waverly Plaster Chuck Paint, but you could paint it any color that you like. Now I'm going to take these transfers from Dollar Tree, choose the one that I like, which is the together one, and that little plant on the side of it, and I'm going to rub those on to the front of my little box here, again using my Dollar Tree scraper. I'm going to add another transfer on the other side of that little word image as well to fill my box out, and then I will brush over my box with Waverly Antique Wax. And here is what this looks like. It's so easy, customizable, and I think absolutely adorable. You could really do this any way that you like. So for our next idea, we are going to create this decor box that is perfect for a table centerpiece or a vignette. So I began with six of these wooden pallets from the Dollar Tree. They are the larger wooden pallets. 
and I removed the stickers off the back, which are probably the only stickers from Dollar Tree that remove easily. I then made two sets of two, holding them together with some hot glue and some popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree. I just trimmed the popsicle sticks down to size and glued them where the two pallets connect. So these two sets are the front and the back of my crate. I'm just doubling up my popsicle sticks, trim the popsicle sticks down to size and glue them where the two pallets connect. So these two sets are the front and the back of my crate. I'm just doubling up my, my popsicle sticks to make sure I have a lot of stability. I'm using Gorilla Glue hot glue, but you can use any type of adhesive that you like. Now I'm going to take another palette and flip it over. And to the back side, I am going to glue my two sets of two upward. So it's probably easier for you to see than me explain, but I'm just going to use generous amounts of glue and reinforce with glue $6 for a very customizable crate. Now what you use, you could use foam board or the back of a Dollar Tree picture frame or a Dollar Tree sign. I just opted for these Gen Blue craft sticks from Walmart. It took me a ton of them and I just laid them all out, trace where I needed to cut them down and I did so. And then I'm just going to glue this to the top of my crate, which will be the bottom. <laughs> so I just glue them to the sides there and this is an easy crate that's very customizable. Now I'm just taking a little piece of wood. It's a wood plank from Dollar Tree. They come six to a pack and I'm just gluing it to the front of my crate so that I can customize this. Now I wasn't sure what I wanted to put on here so let me know what you would put on here if you make this. I just ended up using some Dollar Tree um, transfers with a little design and I wrote the word bloom but just let me know what you would put. I'm going to do plaster chalk paint on this chippy brush and I'm going to be brushing all over my crate just to give it an age distress look. I really like how this looks. And then I am going to fill the inside with some pieces of brown craft paper from Dollar Tree that I just cut up and just kind of crunch them together. And this will dummy up the bottom of my crate so I don't have to have it as full. I'm just using some Dollar Tree florals. Of course, that big white floral is not from Dollar Tree. And here are the rub-on transfers that I just applied to the front. Again, I just could not decide what to put on the front, but I like how the transfers look. So here it is, very customizable. Um, I I hope you like it. So here's what it looks like repurposed. I took those flowers out and I put in some more greenery. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please consider subscribing if you haven't. If you recreate any of my projects and you would like to show me, I do have Instagram, which will be linked in the description box. Take care, friends. You can subscribe to my mom's channel. And thank you for watching today's craft and stay safe.